you are a researcher and an engineer while also being a conceptual artist. Using new media and mixed media, you explore technology, ideologies, and cultures. What would be one word that best describes your experiences? I think it's adjusting. Just because of all these different backgrounds I've been experienced and I choose to, I think it requires a lot of energy and uh, adjustment during the whole process because I'm talking to different people, learning from different people and adjust myself to be a better artist in the future. Interaction researcher and engineer Shen Liu became a media artist to delve into the relationships and links between technology and social culture. She uses installations, performances and mixed media to get her message across about sensations in the technical age. Shin graduated from Tsinghua University. She has worked as a human-computer interface researcher for institutions like Microsoft and Google ATAP, and she just got her master's degree in fine arts from Rhode Island School of Design. When you first got here, mm -hmm. you you started school, you started working for Google, right? Yeah. For the ATAP division, mm -hmm. and project that you were working there mm -hmm. just launched a few months ago, right? Yeah, in Google I.O. this year. Can you tell me a little bit about the project? What is it all about? What was your involvement? It's about a conductive fabric. Mm -hmm. So we are basically making materials and embedded technology into the materials. So imagine your f the fabric you are wearing and now the clothing are actually touchpad or like trackpad just like your MacBook your phone. yeah and then you can interact with your fabric and clothing and to manipulate like digital platform like phone and computer it is interesting because it merged the boundary between digital and analog objects so before when you were thinking about I'm going to have some digital platform then that's an uh, iPhone, it's separated from your clothing, your sofa. Mm -hmm. But now the things tend to be kind of blurred and more like ambiguous in terms of their relationship. So that's the interesting part to, for me to think about how in the future, like normal objects tend to be di digitalized and how our understanding of technology and the virtual world would be different after we're basically living in a world which everything kind of has this du duality of them. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I feel like the comfort line is always it's becoming kind of blurred as well because yeah. objects that used to be just regular objects without yeah. any yeah. of technology you now. Which brings me to your thesis yeah. at Rizzi. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of people who are into arts don't really get too much into the mechanical side of things like engineering or research. And I feel like a lot of your works, they're such a true combination of both, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like your thesis, you. like the tier project, mm -hmm. you analyzed the, uh, your tiers, right? Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. what happened? What, how did you even think of that to begin with? Uh, so. For me, my work is very much conceptual, I have to say. Uh, instead of making something aesthetically or like focusing on the crafting, I'm more interested in using my art to talk about a specific topic I'm interested in or like position where I am at that uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. So for that project, the tier project, for me, I think it's about the distance I created between me and the other person. So the artificial tier I made are based on my own data. So I collect my emotional tears and I went to uh, chemical labs and I ran all those chemical, like scientific analyzing with the scientists. So I was part of it. I didn't just leave it. <laughs> and then 
I got the data and uh, it's basically sugar, protein, salt, water, this kind of things and a, a combination. Confidence. Yeah, and then I remade it, uh, mass produced it and asked the audience to touch it. For me, it's a simulation of my own tear. Of course, it's not the real thing, but from the materiality part of it, it's kind of the same, at least as a gesture. So. The question I'm asking is like, is that the same thing when you clearly know it's a simulation? Or do you feel there's something real inside of the simulation or when a simulation tends to be a simulacra? So that's the thing I think I've experienced in my daily life because of technology, digital platforms, everything. So when I test my friend, I call my friend, I do FaceTime or Skype, I can see this person and it's not a real image, but the, the presentation of one person, the simulation of one person could still form a nice conversation, an emotional connection between these two people. So that's interesting for me to think about like how much and how effective our life is being simulated and replaced. Your thesis statement also talked about how technology sort of creates circles, individual circles of separation to people. Mm -hmm. How so? How do you experience that yourself? As a modern city person, it's easy to feel like you're connected to everyone, but at the same time very isolated from it. I think uh, Shari Turk, she wrote a book, she had a TED talk before about like how we are connected to each other all the time, but we are also very much lonely at the same time. I think it's a general topic for lots of people uh, right now who are experiencing this isolation and connection at the same time in a very chaotic city just like New York. Yeah. And that's also why I think, not mainly why, but like, you know, most people in New York, 70% of New Yorkers are single, which is actually interesting because in a small town, that percentage is way lower than this big city where you have so many options. But how was the reaction after you presented your project, your thesis? How did it sort of back up your statement? I think so. Yeah. So when I present at work, so people were looking at it, they saw a big jar of like clear liquid and they don't know what is that and they read my documentation, my statement, like, oh, I know this is artificial tear. And then I was like, can you touch it? I was observing people. I like to see whether you can touch it. There are people who are willing to touch and there are people who's like, oh, no, no, no. And they were feeling very much uncomfortable. And there are people who touch it and then realized it, what it is. It was like, oh, what should I do now? So. That's interesting for me, and as the piece itself, it works in a way people have emotional reaction to this basically chemical mixed liquid, which shouldn't be anything special than the others. But because of the way it is made, people start to feel uncomfortable or very intimate, too intimate when they touch <laughs> my artificial tears in the gallery setting. Did you get any type of answers that you wanted to before you started to bring this project to life? I think at the beginning it's just my own statement and my own theory about like I think simulation mm -hmm. does contain real emotion. But now I think it's more like when the audience had actual reaction, I think it's a proof of what I thought. So it sounds like a little bit like experimenting Absolutely. project for me. <laughs> so I proved my idea. And at the same time for me, it's very different because for like strangers, um, when they touch my tear, that's one experience for myself as an artist. But they are also my friends, my close uh, friends, classmates, and even my, uh, my mom. When they touch the tear, I personally feel something <laughs> uncomfortable. I think that's interesting experience for me to think about like how my relationship was affected during that process and whether it is comforting or disturbing experience for me when someone touched my artificial tear.